Well, hey guys, for today's video, I've got to share with you the truth about mineral sunscreens. Let me know in the comments, have you ever heard the statement or read somewhere that chemical sunscreens work by absorbing UV rays, whereas mineral sunscreens work by reflecting and scattering UV rays? Um, that's not entirely true. There's more to the story. In today's video, we're gonna get into it. First of all, what are chemical sunscreens and how do they differ from mineral sunscreens? Uh, chemical sunscreen ingredients, that terminology is referring to sunscreen ingredients that are organic. And by organic now, I don't mean produce at Whole Foods, but rather compounds that contain carbon. Whereas mineral, uh, more appropriately termed inorganic, um, are sunscreen active ingredients that contain metal oxides, namely zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. The way that organic sunscreens, commonly referred to as chemical sunscreens, work is you've got carbon atoms that are held together by bonds, double bonds. And the way that this works is that those double bonds can absorb UV rays, packets of energy. And the molecules kind of wiggle around and then convert that energy and dissipate it as heat. Now mineral sunscreens, on the other hand, zinc or titanium dioxide, these are metal oxides. They look a lot different. They're just metals bound together with oxygen. Inorganic, aka mineral sunscreen active ingredients, these are sheets of metal and oxygen. Just looking at them, it would make sense that rather than absorb UV rays, they would reflect UV rays. You see a fine powder of either zinc oxide or titanium dioxide is going to pe appear white to the eye. Basically the light enters each particle and reemerges unmodified and that is what you see with your eyes. But in order for these metal oxide ingredients to actually offer photo protection against ultraviolet radiation, in order to do that, they really have to be laid down as a opaque sheet. Cosmetically speaking, that is not desirable, right? to have a white opaque film on the skin surface. And if you go back to a land far, far away known as the 70s, in 1978, the FDA proposed rule for sunscreens said the following about titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide as a physical sunscreen. It reflects and scatters UV and visible rays, providing a barrier for sun sensitive individuals. Titanium dioxide scatters both UV and visible light radiation rather than absorbing the rays. Titanium dioxide is recognized as an opaque chemical for use as a physical sunscreen because it scatters UV rays thereby preventing a sunburn. What the FDA was specifying here is titanium dioxide as a sunscreen ingredient in a single form, meaning as a UV filtering agent described as a sunscreen opaque sun block. An opaque sunscreen that reflects or scatters light in the UV and visible range, thereby prevents and minimizes sun tan and sunburn. So this language around titanium dioxide, that's really where we historically referred to products as sun blocks. You don't see that term anymore. You don't see sun blocks anymore. But in a land far, far away known as the 80s and 90s, yeah, we had sunblock. The way that we used to wear sunblock what were we thinking? Y'all think Gwyneth Paltrow had a, has a messed up relationship with her application of sunscreen? You know, I'm not a sort of head to toe slather of sunscreen, but I like to put some kind of on my nose and the area where the sun really hits. We were using these products labeled as sunblock and going out with just like an opaque application to our nose, parts of our face, using it more like face paint than the way it was intended to be used to a widespread area. Who remembers going to the pool and seeing the lifeguards sit out there all day with, <laughs> with the sunblock on their nose. In order for sunscreen to, to work, you know, you need to apply it to all sun exposed surfaces, not just like willy nilly. Sunscreens have come a long way and the messaging around proper use of sunscreens has come a long way. And back in 1999, the FDA removed this definition of sunblock, A, because it was misleading. And as sunscreen formulation came along, manufacturers were able to develop micronized 
zinc oxide, titanium dioxide for inclusion in sunscreens to offer broad spectrum UVA and UVB protection, but without that opaque chalkiness. And as those things were being formulated, we came to learn that zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in sunscreens they really don't do much in the realm of reflecting and scattering, but rather just like their chemical counterparts, AKA organic sunscreens, they too absorb UV rays. Author Colias was the first actually to discover this back in 1986, that the primary way in which zinc oxide and titanium oxide offer UV protection is not by scattering and reflecting, but rather by absorbing UV rays. Let's just take a look at the percentage of light reflected off of titanium dioxide. I'm gonna show you a graph here where you take on the, on the horizontal line, the horizontal axis, the X axis, you have different wavelengths. And on the vertical axis, the Y axis, you have percent reflectance. Basically, the higher up you go, the more reflecting you get. But if you look at the graph, you can see that, um, you, again, on the x-axis you have different wavelengths. The region of the x-axis, the, the horizontal line, where you have the wavelengths that correspond to ultraviolet light, around 280 nanometers to 400 nanometers, right there you can see that there's not much going on in the way of reflection. They primarily are absorbing there. Similarly, you can see the same thing for zinc oxide. Where I have circled the zinc oxide, as you can see on this graph, it's not really reflecting the, the, in, in the wavelengths corresponding to UV. And the same holds true for titanium dioxide. You continue actually to see this repeated over and over again. Not just, it's not just a social media issue. It is actually widespread ac across the medical field where this continues to be repeated that physical sunscreens, mineral sunscreens work by reflecting UV rays and, and chemical sunscreens work by absorbing them. When in reality, they both work by absorbing UV rays. Mineral sunscreens and zinc with, with zinc or titanium dioxide, sure, they can, they can reflect to a certain extent, but that's not the bulk of the work that mineral sunscreens are doing. It's a really common thing that is perpetuated. I was taught as a medical student that chemical sun sunscreens absorb and mineral sunscreens reflect. I was taught as a dermatology resident that chemical sunscreens absorb and mineral sunscreens reflect. And I continue to see this repeated throughout even the dermatology literature. Um, and, and I'm not talking literature from the 80s and 90s, I'm talking about very, very recent. Now, that being said, you know, I attend a lot of meetings and I have heard the correct language being used, so it's not widespread amongst all dermatologists. I also read the Journal of the American Medical Association and they have this nice feature in there each month called a patient page where it's basically information on a condition in more layman's terms with really ni a really nice illustration. So on May 1st, they had a patient page on you know, what parents should know about sun protection in their children, a great image, a great illustration. But then when you read in the body of the text, the, the layman's information, you see again, mineral sunscreens work by reflecting UV rays. That's really not the main way in which they work. It is not technically accurate to say that chemical sunscreens and mineral sunscreens are different in terms of how they work to protect you from a sunburn or a suntan. In fact, they work very similarly. They work largely by absorbing UV rays, not by reflecting and scattering them. Someone did actually reply back in, I wanna say the 90s, to an article that was published using this incorrect language. Someone in the field of sunscreen development actually wrote a, a reply, you know, a letter to the editor saying, you know, this is not correct to be saying that mineral active, zinc, titanium dioxide, uh, that it's not correct to, to, to say that they work by reflecting and scattering. That is, and they presented graphs and everything. Again, it's not widespread. There are a lot of dermatologists who do accurately communicate the difference, but a lot don't. And then of course the medical profession as a whole, likewise does not 
often communicate the difference correctly. I wouldn't be surprised um, if you go back to like some of my very first videos on sunscreen, I probably said the same thing. Does it even matter though that much? Like for purposes of communication, I think it can. You know, in the grand scheme of things, is anybody gonna be harmed by describing them this way? Probably not. Like the, the goal is to get people to use sunscreens and the communication often come, it's followed by lang language around, well, you know, the mineral sunscreens, they're more likely to leave a white cast, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the, it just probably doesn't end up harming people, but accuracy really matters, especially in this day and age where there's so much fear mongering around, uh, air quotes, chemical sunscreens, the organic sunscreen filters. There's a lot of sunscreen phobia. So I think being as accurate as possible is the best thing. Chemical sunscreen. I find that to be a very nebulous term because mineral active ingredients, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, you're gonna find zinc and titanium on the periodic table. They are chemicals. And calling zinc oxide and titanium dioxide physical is also a little bit odd because the organic active ingredients, chemical sunscreens, they they are physical entities. They, they physically take up space. So that in and of itself is not particularly accurate. So the most accurate in terms of distinguishing the two is to say, organic sunscreens when you're talking about compounds that have carbon in them like avabenzone, octinoxate, octocrylin, and to say inorganic when you're talking about zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. So why do I say chemical and mineral so much? I think because I don't want to confuse people because people are just used to hearing that. But technically it's most accurate to say organic rather than chemical and inorganic rather than mineral. Regardless of how they work or what you choose to call them, uh, these ingredients are all effective options for formulating sunscreens that protect against the UV spectrum broadly to protect you against a sunburn um, and sun damage when used appropriately. Key take home points. Mineral sunscreen actives are in fact chemicals. Chemical sunscreen actives do in fact physically take up space. Chemical sunscreens may be more accurately referred to as organic, meaning they have carbon in them, whereas mineral or physical sunscreens may be more accurately described as inorganic, meaning they're not carbon compounds. They are metal oxides. Both organic and inorganic sunscreen actives primarily work by absorbing UV rays, not by reflecting and scattering. Yes, the inorganic metal oxides, they can reflect a small amount, but that is not the primary way in which they work to protect you from UV rays. Now, both organic and inorganic sunscreens are both wonderful options for broad spectrum protection when formulated correctly. Um, but an advantage of the organic sunscreen actives over the inorganic is that they're not going to leave that white film which is something that is not cosmetically elegant for many people, especially for people who have deeper skin tones. So by somehow acting like one is different in terms of how it works, I think it can really paint a picture that one might be better than the other when in reality, they're both great options. And choosing the one that you are most likely to accept using and using consistently, you like, you enjoy, that's what's gonna equal the success. Anyway, y'all, I hope this video was informative to you guys. Now on the end slate, I'm going to link a video reviewing one of my new favorite holy grail organic sunscreens. So check that one out if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.